Hello everyone, RogueFox here, and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Today, I'll show you how to create a hidden tree entrance for Bedrock Edition. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. What we're going to do is place down our button right here. That's going to activate our hidden input, which is then going to reveal our hidden entrance. Now we do want to keep this hidden, so we can go ahead and take our button with us. And then we can hop on down below into our hidden base, or wherever you like to place down here. Now to close it up, all we do is press this button right here. Everything will extend back and go back to the way it was. Now to get back up, what we're gonna do is press this button once again. Everything's gonna retract, just like in the beginning. And then we hop into this little minecart right here, come up, jump out, and there we go. And of course, to close it back up, we place our button back down, press it, everything will close back up, and then we take our button and then go on about our business. To make this hidden tree entrance, you'll need a six by six area. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our supplies. And there we go, there are all the supplies we'll need for today's build. And do take note that these are droppers and not dispensers. With that being said, if you want to pause the video, go ahead and do that, grab your supplies, and then we'll jump right into the build. To get things started, we want to go ahead and place in our sticky pistons. So, what we want to do is come to the bottom left here, come three blocks over, three blocks in, and right there, go ahead and place down a temporary block. Now, grab your sticky pistons, place two sticky pistons facing up with a temporary block on its face, this is going to be our double piston extender. We can knock out that bottom block, come two blocks over, place down another temporary block right there, get your sticky pistons, and place three sticky pistons facing in this direction. So it should look like that. We can go ahead and knock that bottom block out. And then for our last sticky piston, come off to the right side of this top one, and then place one more sticky piston facing up right there, and then one more temporary block on its face. So there we go. That is our sticky pistons all set up. Now let's go ahead and wire them up. For the first part, we're going to go ahead and wire up our double piston extender, as well as the piston to the right. So go ahead and grab some blocks, come down below, we're going to place a block in this gap right here, come a block over, and a block down, and place your block right there. Now what we want to do is place a block up like this, a block down, and then one more block up like that. Let's go ahead and knock these out. And then against the piston, go ahead and place down one more block. So this should be your block setup so far. Now what we want to do is come around to this side, place a block right here, and against this top piston, go ahead and grab your dropper and place it facing up. Now honestly, the position of the dropper doesn't matter, we just want it against that top piston right there, and then you'll see why in a moment. Now go ahead and grab your blocks once again, come two blocks over from this one, and then a block right against the dropper like that. So there we go, there is the blocks all set up. Now let's go ahead and start wiring it up. For the wiring, what we want to do is grab our repeaters, and first of all, let's go ahead and run a repeater right into that dropper and set it to 4 ticks. In this gap down below, place down another repeater running into this block, and set that one to 4 ticks as well. Now, on top of our dropper right here, go ahead and run a repeater running into this top block, and then go ahead and leave that set to 1 tick. From there, we can go ahead and line all these blocks up with redstone dust, dust right there, and then dust down below, and you should have a dot right there. So that is very important, so let's go ahead and try this out. So there we go, we have our double piston extension, and then this one extends as well. Now if we were to remove this top block, first of all, our line will go down like that, and then we don't have anything powering this, but if we try to flip it, it's not going to make our double piston extender work, because now this line is running out, and it's not powering this block right here. So for those of you wondering, that is why we have that block right there. So there we go, there is everything all wired up. Now let's go ahead and hook up the sticky pistons off to the side. These three sticky pistons right here play a huge role in this build. So it's gonna have two phases, the extension and the retraction. So its first job is to extend the double piston extender this way so it can be powered. And then after the double piston extender retracts, it also needs to retract the double piston extender. So to do the extension, what we wanna do is place a block against the middle piston right there. Skip a block place a block down below so we have this gap come a block up right here and then a block up just like that and then go ahead and place a block right there we can remove this one now to wire this up place redstone dust here that will power this block when activated and that's going to power this repeater right here set to one tick and then redstone dust on top and then redstone dust down below and there we go that is the extension phase let me go ahead and quickly demonstrate this extension phase. So what we're going to do is place our double piston extender against our pistons over here. Just like this. We can take this one out. So as I mentioned, its first job 
is to extend and push our double piston extender across so it can be powered. So let's go ahead and try that out so you can see that in action. Now when we take the power away, our double piston extender retracts, but we have no way of bringing it back. So that's where the retraction phase comes in. Now for the retraction phase, this is actually the most simple thing to set up, but it's probably the most confusing part to understand, at least for me anyways, because it involves observers. But what we're gonna do is grab our observer and then against this dropper right here, go ahead and place it down. So our arrow should be facing towards our redstone over here. And as you saw, the double piston extender was retracted. So that is the redstone all done. So if we flip our lever, that extends. We have our double piston extender. We also have this piston extending. And then when we take the power away, our double piston extender retracts. And then our pistons here grab our double piston extender and then bring it back, leaving us our opening. Now, I'm going to go ahead and try to explain this part of the redstone because I feel like observers are one of those blocks that are somewhat confusing to use, like I said, at least for me. I know uh, Bowtie Man has no problem using them. He's actually the Observer Master, as I like to call him. So, for those of us who would like to understand observers better, let's go ahead and try to figure this out. So, what's going to happen is I'm going to flip this lever, and in one tick, these pistons are going to extend, and then you'll see by the extension of this piston here. So, as soon as this gets power, this is the first thing that extends, so that would push our double piston extender over here, so then it would be extended just like that. And then on the retraction, so what's going to happen, we take away the power. So what's happening is we have this 8 tick delay that is controlling our double piston extender. But because we have this dropper here, our observer is detecting that dropper updating in 8 ticks. So after 8 ticks, our piston is going to retract. And then a tick later, it's going to fire off these pistons once again. Hopefully that made sense. I know that was a mouthful. So let's go ahead and try to get a good look at it. So let's go ahead, we're going to turn the power off. And notice that pushed out after this double piston extended retracted. Let's do it one more time. So again, this is the first thing that has powered. And then when we take the power away, there's our double piston extended retraction. And then that one fires off at the very end. So the redstone for this is all done. Now we do need to wire up our hidden input, but before we do that, we can go ahead and start placing in everything around it. So as I mentioned, we do have temporary blocks here. So this is actually gonna be the ground right here, just like that. And as you guessed, the block sticking up is gonna be our tree. So what we're gonna do is turn the power off. We're gonna let that retract. Place a temporary dirt block right there. And then go ahead and grow to your tree, like so. Remove that block. And then we do need to remove this temporary block right here because this is where our wood block is going to be. So let's go ahead and flip it once again. There we go. That is all done. And then when we take the power away, we have our opening sequence. I went ahead and filled in the rest of our 6x6 area with some grass. So that's the only thing that has changed. Now what we want to do is wire up our hidden input. And to do that, we're going to make a T flip-flop. So from here on the right side, come a block back. We want a dropper facing up and then a dropper facing away from our build. We want to run a hopper into the bottom dropper, like that, and then come one block down, and then crouch place a dropper facing down, running into our hopper right there. And in this bottom dropper, go ahead and throw in one item, like that. Now what we're going to do is something slightly different for this T flip-flop. What we're going to do is run our comparator out from the dropper that has the item inside, because right now, our build is open, nothing is being powered, so we need some redstone going into that. So we're going to have that comparator running into a block. That's going to power some redstone right here, and that's going to power our sticky piston facing up. And then that's going to have a redstone block on its face, giving all of our redstone some power. So there we go, it's all closed up. And then, of course, I like to test everything. So on this top dropper here, we're going to press it. That's going to turn the power off and then allow everything to retract. We are very close to being done. What we need to do is wire up our inputs into our T flip-flop, and then we still need to place in our minecart up here so we can get out. So for the T flip-flop, what we want to do so we can power it from the ground level is place a glass block above this dropper right here with redstone dust on top, and then redstone dust on top of our top dropper there. So from the outside, we can press our button. That'll activate the T flip-flop. Now from the inside, what we want to do 
and we actually need to set our little hallway up. So let's go ahead and quickly do that, just like this. So on the second block out, and parallel with this dropper right here, go ahead and place your button right there, and place a glass block right against that dropper there, and then place redstone dust down, just like that. So we're going to press our button from the inside. There is our extension. And then, of course, we press it again. We're going to get our retraction. And finally, it is time to place in our minecart so we can actually get out of our hidden area down below. So to do this, what we're going to do on this block right here, go ahead and place a rail right there with the minecart on top. Knock that block out. Let it drop down below. And now what we're going to do is come a temporary block out here, place a piston facing in this direction, and then go ahead and give that some power. But before we do that, we do want to make sure that we're not going to lose this block. So place a temporary block right there. So we want to enclose just like this. And let's go ahead and power that. There we go. And then we can place this block back. And then remove our temporary block. So there we go. There is our minecart. So when we go down below, we can get out. And then we just jump out. And there we go. Everything is all finished. Now here we go for our final test. Button here. Activate our hidden input. That opens up our entrance down below. We hop on in. We close it behind us. Everything goes back to normal, just like so. And then to get out, we press this once again. That's going to retract. And then we go ahead and hop into our minecart right here. Jump out. Throw our button back down. Press it. And everything closes right back up. And keep in mind, you're not only limited to a tree. You can actually place this inside your house. For example, if you want a hidden furnace entrance, it's going to work just the same. So everything is going to retract. And it looks pretty cool. I mean, you can't even tell it's there. That would be outside. So don't think you're only limited to a tree. You can find many uses for this circuit. And I just wanted to go ahead and show you that. And there you have it, everyone. A hidden tree entrance for Bedrock Edition. This is the end of our tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Rogue Fox, and I'm out. I'll see you later.